RBS Business Research Academy welcomes to you in the video lecture number 29. In this video lecture, I discuss about the difference between the exploratory factor analysis and confirmatory factor analysis. Dear researchers, most of the time we discuss these type of the words, and it, but it sometimes is very difficult to differentiate these two uh, concepts from each other. So that's why uh, the job of this video is to differentiate between the, uh, uh, these two concepts from each other. Uh, so this video is a complete a theoretical video and uh, between the lecture number 30 where I have discussed uh, that means the uh, how to perform confirmatory analysis practically in smart areas. If you find time, please watch this video also to understand how we can perform CFA in smart areas. Okay, so now without wasting time, we are starting about this, uh, uh, like the difference between the EFA and CFA. But before this one, my name is Dr. Rainbow Sumro, and I'm from Shabit University, Pakistan. So, but, and here, uh, this is my certificate, which I earned from the Simar Kills Academy, Germany. And uh, this was actually the online course where I covered more than uh, nine modules in this online training. Okay, so now the EFA and CFA. Basically, the purpose of the this the, the purpose of both like the Mr. EFA and CFA is what to determine the number in the nature of written variable. How many number of how many written variables are there and what is their nature? So now written variable may be sometimes uh, difficult for you guys to understand uh, the concept of the latent variable. So written variable is simply that variable is which you call unobserved variable which we cannot directly measure so like set implies satisfaction so now that we cannot measure it in order to measure implies satisfaction we are required to ask certain questions so any type of the variable which we cannot directly measure that's called as a latent variable by the way i have uh, my two videos are available and the image you are looking here about the uh, latent variable is there are two types of the latent variable one is a reflective and another is a formative so both videos are available if you find time again you can watch uh, these two videos Okay, so further account for the variation and co-variation. How much uh, like the, they are they are introducing or they are contributing the variation or the covariance, whatever there among the observed variable. And now the observed variable, that variable which we can directly my like the age, like the income, all these are okay. So there are the two types of the uh, measurement model. One is the exploratory factor analysis, and another is the confirmatory factor analysis, CFA and EFA. Both are basically measuring the uh, latent variable. Okay, so first one is a CFA. CFA basically creates, evolutes the theoretical hypothesis and largely is uh, driven by the theory. So the one basic difference between the CFA and EFA is that CFA is based on certain theory. It means that the, here we can say that we are going to test the theory with the help of the CFA because it's, uh, it depends on some of the theoretical hypothesis are there. So in order to apply the CFA, you are required to develop some hypothesis. While in case of the EFA, identify factors based on the data. We have to identify, we have to extract the factors from the, uh, given the data. So that's why it's driven by the data. It's it, it, it based on the data. And uh, it's another job is to maximize amount of the variance among by the different variables which are there. Furthermore, I want to say something about the EFA. Basically, there are the two types of the techniques uh, like that. One is the interdependence technique and it's the dependence techniques. So interdependence techniques like the in this way, every item or uh, every uh, your uh, variable depends on each other. So that's why the EFA is part of from the uh, data of the interdependence technique. And uh, another is a dependent techniques where some of the variables they depend on another variable. So now that is called uh, the dividend technique, like the regulation is a part, is, is it from the type of the family. So now the EFA basically is about the interdependent technique. So therefore, uh, like the, all the variables in this one, they are depending on each other and their job is first to maximize the variance. CFA requires any researchers to hypothesize. First, we have to create the hypothesis uh, before applying the CFA. The number of the factors, whether or not these factors are correlated, either there is a correlation among all the factors or not, and which item may load onto the and replace up which factor. So now, for example, they have to load on the certain factor, and then when the items will load on the certain factor, now all those items will make up one factor. 
And while in the CFA, research are not required to have any specific hypothesis. So EFA, there's no need to have a hypothesis and about how many factors will emerge. So now it depends upon the, uh, like the eigenvalue, like the skill plot, and like the, here we are using the Kaiser criterion. So according to that one, you can uh, like the decide, that means according to the Kaiser criterion, you are allowing the software EFA technique to, dip, to produce the factors. Now it will produce those factors which has the eigenvalue more than one, one or more than one. So that means you are depending, you are depending on the will of the your software. EFA looks for a pattern while CFA does statistical hypothesis testing on the on the proposed uh, model. So now EFA basically tries to have uh, some pattern. You are looking here, they type the pattern there. A clear pattern is there where all the items have been loaded, loaded on their respective. Uh, factors. So now here you are not looking any class loading over there. So basically, there's a job of the EFA to perform to create a type of the pattern where all the items should load on their respective factors. This is the job of the EFA. And CFA is job. The, C, the job of the CFA is was to test the proposed hypothesis. Uh, the hypothesis in the proposed model. Uh, if you are unsure of the what factors in, to include in your model, you are applied. Uh, EFA, that means when you, are, you do not know what type of factor you are including in the model because you do not have any proposed model before you which you are going to test or you do not have any theory which you are going to test. You have some of the factors, you have some of the variable and on that one you are going to apply uh, whatever you are going to apply that is basically EFA. Okay, once you have eliminated the fact, some factors after, that means if you have eliminated or reduced some of the factors, some of the items from the your model and settle on the what to include in your model and you have decided, okay, this is thing I have to include in the model. So now it means you are going, you are performing the CFA over there. In case of AVFA, you are not going to delete anyone, but all the variable you are including, you are putting into the uh, software, all the variable you are considering, uh, for the data analysis, so data of the say, type of data analysis called is a EFA. So now this is another major distinction between the EFA and CFA. EFA is used for instrument or skill that never been tested before. This is my understanding. That I mean, those one which have not been tested before one. So now you are required to use the EFA on those one. Like the newly you have that means you have newly have developed any uh, instrument or any skill. So it is necessary to apply the EFA on that one. Even though if you are uh, right there in the developing uh, process of the new skill, the EFA is required over there. For example, if you uh, read the surfboard model, so now initially there was a 96 item of surfboard model. And after that one, again, the EFA was applied over there, and then they reached on, I think, 66, I think they applied the EFA, then now, finally, they reached on the 22 with the five dimensions. So now, they reach on this one with a certain process. Now, their process called is a EFA. And while in case of CFA, use for instrument skills that have been tested before. So now, now both have the uh, uh, the same objective. This one has a validity and liability, and this one is also a, a validity and liability. But the difference between the EFA and the CFA is also before you. I argue it's by according to my own understanding, translating translate existing instrument. If you are translating any exam now, for them, if it is Chinese language, if it is Spanish or any other one, and you are translating into the in English language, now that means that. That has been tested before for its validity and liability. At that time, it's for tested for the validity and liability. But now you are what translating in your own language uh, in order to use in another country or in your own uh, country. So it means that this uh, has become a new. Now your that instrument has now become a new because it was initially it was in another language, initially it was applied in another country. Now you are after translating it. Or if you are going to apply in a in a different country, so it means the same instrument has become a new, and therefore you need to perform the EFA. Another one, moreover, argue that the, when you use existing instrument, the instrument which is right now, and there's have been tested for ability and liability also in the same country, same language, okay, but in another sector or research setting. Now the sector is different, the research setting are different in which you are going to apply. So now instrument also become a new. So in this case, the instrument is new. Okay, since so it is being tested, used for 
under very different population are assembled. So research setting means that when you have a, probably when you have a new population are the sample from that population, that the same instrument has become a new. So now you need to perform EFA on that instrument. When should we use CFA? The first condition is that the, my point of view is that the CFA should be used in medical studies that use instrument or scale that have been tested in many previous studies. If most of the time they have been tested in the previous studies, like as I give example, the sub -call model or the, the theory of brain behavior, there's also one scale is there. So most of the time they have been extensively that has been used. In this case, you may not apply the EAP, but directly you can apply the CAP to check its reliability and validity. Another thing is that, that our job is to confirm that these instruments are still, are well reliable in our research setting. Research setting, again, the different research settings are like your population is different, your, uh, uh, your, uh, your sector is different, your sample is different. So these are different settings out there. So in this one, if you are uh, the research, you are required to confirm that these instruments, their reliability and weight. Okay, on person load, it's my observation, I tend to perform both EFA and CEP, both are important. But if you ask from me which one I should perform first, then the EFA should be performed first, and then we should perform the CEP. While I was doing my PhD at that time, I applied the history question modeling in the MOS. I did the same thing. First, I conducted the EFA of the instrument which I was using uh, in the case pieces. And then I applied on the same data, I, I brought the data into the uh, uh, MOS and where I apply the CAP again on that one. For what purpose? To ensure the reliability and validity of the instrument. So I consider the very reliability of my instrument is enhanced with the dual effort. So now this is a dual effort. If you're applying to both these one, that's wonderful. So now, uh, mostly, now we are working in this, uh, on the PLS same. And uh, so on this is a wonderful paper, which I have found, it, it, it talks about the way to use and how to report the results of the PLS same. So now this wonderful paper is there, which is written by the uh, Joseph here, and uh, then Marco Sardes, Chris Ringer, and the Jeffrey. So these are very popular researchers are there in the field of the PLS. Same. Either you are using smart PLS, either you are using any other PLS software. So now, if you want, now if you want to report the results, now you are required to uh, to go through this paper. So that's why I have brought this one for you. By the way, I have left this uh, link uh, below this video. If you want to download it, now, now you can click that one and uh, you will be able to download this uh, research paper. At the end of this video, I'm really thankful for you that you have watched this video completely. And I hope this is up to your expectation. And uh, I, I'm, I'm sure that now you are able to, uh, to basically differentiate between the uh, to create the difference between the EFA and CFA. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share my video. Thank you very much.